and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. I think the misunderstanding is that God's law was given as a standard for us to live by. Well, try and live by it. Well, the law's a mirror. It's just simply meant to reflect what God thinks, who God is, how He wants you to live. And then you get to look in the mirror and you get to go, how do I fit that standard? You know, love God with your heart, mind, soul and strength and love your neighbor as much as you love yourself because that's the essence of the law. We can't do it. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right. This do, and thou shalt live. What you're doing is you're revealing in the hearts of your people their shortcomings and failures. So to just leave it in their hands and their effort puts a weight on them they can't bear up under. I felt like I was walking on eggshells all the time because it felt as if at any moment I can go to hell because I'm not doing enough. Um, and that's where you see a lot of people who grew up in churches where the gospel might not have been really fleshed out where they become atheists because it's like I can't do enough to please them anyway. So. Why, why trust him? Why believe in him? Um, I'm still the same person. I'm still wicked. I'm still sinful. Well, what if I have failed sexually? If I'm a, a man sitting in the church service at that moment, I have no hope as I walk out. I'm just told, here's 10 ways that you should try harder. We're damning people to those twin possibilities of pride on the one hand or despair on the other. And this is why the gospel is so important, because the gospel comes in in the middle of both of those and says, yeah, you're right, you aren't good enough on the one hand, but Jesus was good for you. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. In many ways, the defining doctrine of true biblical Christianity is justification by faith alone in Christ alone. Justification is God declaring us righteous even though we are guilty of sin. We see in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. It's not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works so that no man may boast. And so this is the great dividing line between biblical Christianity during the Reformation and the Roman Catholic religion. How they get to heaven is based on what they do rather than what Christ has done. But the Bible teaches, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. That when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, the work has been done. He saves you totally, completely, perfectly. And even though, yes, we sin and can repent, the sacrifice of Christ has paid for those sins. And so there is assurance that He has saved you, He has plucked you out of the world, you're in the palm of His hand, and nobody can pluck you out of His hand. And so that's why the Reformers cried the five solas, that we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, according to Scripture alone, all for the glory of God alone. We then as workers together with him beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. O generation of vipers! How can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. 
But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Ye see then, how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only.